Welcome back to Mad About Modeling. I thought today what I would do is show you how I do my biscuit tuck interior work. Biscuit tuck actually started back in the lowrider days when they would take uh, actual upholstery biscuit tuck work and put it into the lowriders. You can buy actually a device now that, and it's actually on Shapeways that you can um, just heat up your foam and put the impression into it. But I found that that doesn't give you the definition into the foam. Plus, I just like doing stuff by hand. What I started with, and it's not my idea, I want to get that straight. This is something that I picked up from a lowrider forum. They would use a paper cutter such as this thing here, where you would just place your foam in it. But I never got really good results with it. So what I did was, taking this piece off here... And taking a trumpet or a rivet tool from the military field, I took these pieces off of here and I put it onto here. And the reason for that is this thing wouldn't give me a good line that was uniform. So what I did after making this, I actually used a straight edge from this foam here. And you can pick this up at Michael's or you can pick it up at Hobby Lobby. I like to get it at Hobby Lobby myself, but that's gonna be something totally up to you. So here's my tool. This is my other tool. And my straight edge that I run the tool against. I pre-marked the foam on 3 16 of an inch, I found that that works for most 125th, 124th scale. The good thing about using this, other than the thing from Shapeways that form, is you can make the lines bigger on the foam to give you, you know, maybe a 112th scale biscuit. But what I do is I mark the foam with this grid pattern. And this is where your straight edge comes into place. With your tool here, or the tool that you can make, I take it and I line up these lines on the grid pattern. And then you just run the tool right against the straight edge and it gives you that mark for the biscuit. Just like that, and you go back and forth until you have your pattern. Now another thing you can use this for is your roll pleats from the 50s and the 60s when they did their customs in the three inch roll. You have it right here, as you can see. And this foam's really good because it keeps that pattern forever, pretty much. But you can just use that for roll pleating. You can even put it over your bench seat. And again, you can make the lines closer together or farther apart. But this is a pattern that has worked for me that I made this headliner out for the semi-trucks. And it's just a matter of going back and forth until you have a grid pattern. You want to keep it as straight as you can on those lines. And again, this is homemade. You may devise something better, maybe even going back to the paper cutter. It's just a matter of going back and forth. And at this point, you have your biscuit, but you don't have your button for the biscuit. That's where I found this works for me. It's just a little tool that came with a dry transfer kit. And then if you just put it in the hole, or actually where the two lines meet, push it down, give it a little twist, and you got your button. Now you can use aluminum tubing that you sharpen, but I found out that this works best for me. It's all going to be what works best for you. And if you just keep going over until you have your pattern, that's what gives it that definition in there. And if you look a little bit closer, it kind of gives you the head of a button. Now some people that do this, they'll use straight pins and you can even paint them. That's a good thing to use too. 
your straight pin. For time purposes, I'm not going to go ahead and do that on this video. I may farther down the road. Now, if you want to do a diamond plate or a diamond, all you do is you would mark your uh, foam so you're more on a diamond pattern. I didn't mark it, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what a diamond pattern looks versus the button tufting. You can, I did the button tufting on the semi. Semis are more of a diamond tufting. And for diamonds, you just change up your pattern a little bit. So you get a diamond pattern. And it works the same way. Once you have your diamond pattern in there, you you'll go ahead and make your buttons. Go a couple more times here. It wasn't giving me the definition that I was looking for. And this isn't uniform, it's just to show you what a diamond pattern would look versus just the button tufting. It's more on a diamond pattern versus the square button tuft. But that's just to give you an idea how I do it with the homemade tool here that I borrowed from Trumpeter and Cry, Cry Cut. So like I say, it's up to you how you do it. Maybe it'll give you an idea to try it. But that's totally up to you, but that's how I do mine. Uh, thank you very much.